biomedicine is at an inflection point. It turns out that a couple of years ago, former president uh, 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 and uh, head of MIT, uh, Susan Hockfield, uh, and uh, Tyler Jacks, the head of the uh, Koch Institute, um, and uh, Phil Sharp, Nobel Prize winning biologist, they published a report titled uh, The Convergence of the Life Sciences, Physical Sciences, and Engineering. And they held a conference in Washington to highlight the findings of the report, but their point was that we are at a very special period uh, in the biological sciences where breakthroughs are being made literally week by week. And I'd like to do a little bit of a retrospective about those breakthroughs and take you back to really the beginnings of this inflection point, which probably started uh, in 1998 with this. This is a chemical compound known as Gleevec. It was a drug that was developed and approved in 2001, but it began in 1998 with these two individuals, Nicholas Leiden and Brian Drucker. Drucker was an oncologist specializing in leukemia. A particular kind of leukemia that he was interested in is something called chronic myelogenous or myeloid leukemia. It's a kind of leukemia that can lay dormant for years and at some point it accelerates and it can be deadly. It's based upon a particular genetic defect that causes your white blood cells to reproduce in an uncontrolled fashion. And based upon the molecular pathway, Drucker came up with an idea for disrupting that pathway and went on the lookout for the appropriate chemical compound. And in collaboration with a Swiss drug company called Siba Geigy, now known as Novartis, and Nicholas Leiden, who is a, a biochemist uh, there, they came up with this new drug. They gave this drug to a group of 31 patients in a phase one clinical trial in 1998. Of the 31 patients that had this terrible affliction, 31 of them responded with a complete remission of the disease within a matter of weeks. The FDA approved the drug less than three years later in 2001, which is an extraordinarily fast uh, reaction to this amazing result. So anytime you hear people complaining about the FDA being too slow, remember the story. If you've got an incredibly effective drug, the FDA is not your problem. This drug was approved in 2001, and just to give you an idea of how important this is, well, Novartis uh, earned $4.7 billion from this drug just in the year 2015. But that, of course, is not the real aspect of the story that we want to focus on. It has to do, ultimately, with patients. And I'll tell you about four in particular. So the woman on the left, uh, her name is Katie Knutson. She was six years old when she was diagnosed with this disease. And it was a month before she was diagnosed that Gleevec was approved. She's just fine, graduated from nursing school last year, and lives a completely and totally normal life. She wouldn't be with us today without this drug. The second person from the left, Judy Oram, was diagnosed in 1995 with CML. And by 1998, the treatments that were available at the time wasn't working, and she was dying. So she was part of the original clinical trial. She was patient number nine. And within a matter of weeks, complete and total response, just fine. And she's the longest surviving patient uh, of that clinical trial, living a, a, a totally normal life. Uh, in fact, she's now got several grandchildren that she would have never seen had it not been for this drug. The other two gentlemen have all their own stories about this incredible response rate to this miracle drug. Uh, they would, would not be with us today either. Um, they, they just in, in incredible aspects of biomedicine at work. And so ultimately, all of what we're going to talk about this semester is going to come down to this, which is the patient. And we're going to talk about a lot of different aspects, both the science and the business of biotech. But ultimately, the bottom line is going to be, what is the impact on people? So I, I want to keep that front and center and describe how it is that these breakthroughs really are having an impact. Now, there are many other stories like this. But really, starting in 2001, this whole notion of rational drug design, targeted therapy, looking at the molecular basis of disease and being able to disrupt those pathways 
is how drugs have been developed. And there's been a breakthrough after breakthrough. But I want to fast forward to 2017, December, actually, uh, of last year, where a drug was approved that is really just an astonishing accomplishment. The drug is called Luxturna, and it was approved in December 19th of last year. Uh, and it was developed by a company based in Philadelphia called Spark Therapeutics. This is the first of its kind, a gene therapy, where scientists have figured out a way to actually change the very genetic structure of cells in your body. It's a one-time treatment, and in this case, it treats a disease called Leber's congenital amaurosis. This is a genetic mutation that basically causes blindness starting at birth. So you're born with a normal eye, but because of this genetic mutation, over the course of the ensuing weeks and months, your retina begins to deteriorate and you're effectively blind before you are really even uh, sentient. And so there was a very small clinical trial of this particular gene therapy. And I'm going to introduce you to Caroline and Cole Carper. These are two kids that were part of this clinical trial. And I'll quote you what Caroline said in response to this treatment. I went outside when it was snowing, and I was like, oh, I can see the snowflakes. It was really cool to actually see something that I've never seen in my life before. I was blind, but now I see. You know, that's usually reserved for religious experiences. But we can do this now, today. It is possible thanks to these breakthroughs. This is what I mean when I say that we are at an inflection point in biomedicine. So as a finance professor, naturally, I want to look at the inflection point from the financial perspective. So let me show you what the stock market looks like from the perspective of biomedical innovation. So this is the stock returns on a cumulative basis from December 1994 to just a few days ago for Big Pharma, the NYSE ARCA Pharma Index. That's what pharma looks like. Now, it may not look that impressive, and part of the reason for that is because I plotted it together with another index, which is the NYSE ARCA Biotech Index. This is the Biotech Index. Anybody notice anything different about these two indices? In a minute, I'll describe a little bit more about the difference between biotech and pharma. But for now, the purpose, for, for the purposes of the discussion, pharma are big drug companies. Biotech are the smaller startups and uh, uh, the more uh, uh, volatile uh, and uh, supposedly uh, innovative uh, part of the biopharma industry. Now, when you take a look at this plot, it's easy to say, oh, well, biotech is doing great and pharma is languishing. But there's a different and more subtle story that comes about when you plot this on a logarithmic scale. You see, on a logarithmic scale, the same vertical distance corresponds to the same rate of return. And so you can just look at this graph and see a very interesting narrative going on. In particular, when you look at the blue curve and look at the pharma industry, you notice that there are th roughly three different phases of that industry over the last 20 years. The first phase is the mid to late 90s when you can see that pharma has had pretty steady positive growth. That's this period uh, to the left, right? that upward sloping part of the blue line. But starting in the late 90s, for about a 10-year period, pharma has managed to destroy shareholder value. There's a negative rate of return in the pharma index over that 10-year period. And then, of course, since the late 2000, uh, uh, 2000s, you have a, a change in direction, and now it looks like pharma is doing better. So that's the story with pharma. Biotech, on the other hand, has had a very different kind of a pathway. If you take a look at the mid to early 90s, lots of ups and downs, but overall, biotech seems to be doing pretty well. And then there was a bit of a period afterwards where pharma has gone down, but since about 2003, it looks like pharma has been on a tear. Oh, sorry, biotech has been on a tear. And so I've drawn this line here to point to where that inflection point looks like. And it, it sort of looks like it happened around 2003. Uh, in fact, the line is drawn on April the 14th, 2003. 
Anybody know what happened on April the 14th of 2003? Why that date is significant? Besides the fact that you had to file your taxes and you're probably working on that. Yeah. That was the date when the US government announced that it had completed sequencing the human genome. Now, of course, we know that that wasn't quite right. There was still more work to be done. But it was a, it was a date, nonetheless, that was a milestone that was declared. And almost like clockwork, on that day, the biotech industry took off and never looked back. Now, of course, there are many other factors that explain this growth. But that's probably not, not a bad milestone to focus on as the beginning of this inflection point. And it sort of coincides with the story of Gleevec and all of the other designer drugs that came about. 